Josh, what a cozy vibe we have going on in here. That's the whole goal. I'm going to move this stool so it's not upstaging me. I hate to play second fiddle to a stool. Hello. Um, so this is, we, we've got some stand-up comedy for you guys. How many people have been here for like a lot of the day? A couple people. One person lying on the floor. One, <laughs> one person boldly sitting upright as if that the posture will keep you awake. Yeah, totally. And you guys have not been here all day, but you're just getting, you're cozy as hell. Perfect. That's, that's the vibe we're trying to create. So, like, my name is Josh. I'm, uh, I'm your first comedian. I'm hosting this. I put together this lineup. It's so many super fun people that I love to watch perform, uh, and that's why I, I invited them here to join us late at night. Uh, the jokes will start momentarily. This is just an explanation. I'm not like, I'm crushing. Um, I'm, I'm more of a rules comedian. I just lay out premises, and then, and then I just drop the mic, and I'm gone. Welcome. So the, the idea here, who's, is anybody, can, can people drink? Are people drinking in here? Yeah, there we go. Well, yeah, I don't think it's a secret. I think they're selling it out in the front. It would be like mega fucked up if they sold it in the front and you brought it in and they're like, I don't think so. And just <laughs> mutumboed it out of your hands. No, thank you. Good. Okay, so the premise of the show, are you guys familiar with the, the party game Never Have I Ever? Yeah, it's kind of a late, late night drinking game. So all the comics are going to, at various uh, points in their set, they'll, they'll issue a never have I ever. And if you have done the thing that they haven't done, you take a sip. That's the whole rule. You don't have to pound the whole drink. We're not undergraduates trying to prove we've drank before. So you can just drink as much or as little as you want. Or if you're not a drinker, then don't. I'm not trying to push anybody off the wagon tonight. <laughs> Just like, I laid out a premise, obey it. Um, so let's start here. I'm, I'm like not a lot of fun, so I think maybe people will drink when I say this. But I never have I ever, um, never have I ever smoked a cigarette. That's a real thing about me, yeah. I'm, again, I've never had fun. Um, I'm, I'm just like a, uh, like a very, like I'm a pippy longstocking of a person. That's, I've lived in New York eight years, and I've come to realize nobody here likes it when you think things are gonna be okay. <laughs> Everybody in this city loves a pessimist. Everybody loves a guy wearing a black leather jacket, smoking a cigarette. Like, we were all born just to die. <laughs> Flicks the lit button a rat's face. Life is pain, little buddy. Learn it. <laughs> People in New York see that dude. They're like, that guy gets it. That's a cool guy right there. He probably knows why the Velvet Underground is a good band. He can probably taste the difference between different kinds of beer instead of just going, mm, very beery and putting it down forever the way that I do. Meanwhile, I'm just sitting by myself drinking a milkshake. Like, can you believe there's a sunset every day? Wow. <laughs> People meet me, they're like, dude, you're gonna die falling off a Ferris wheel trying to catch a shooting star, you redheaded orphan of a man. How are you the only adult Jew I've ever met who seems like he still believes in Santa Claus? What's your deal? What made you this way? You guys are good. You guys are a lovely comedy audience for kind of being like several different uh, orgies of people in here. You guys, you guys look like you all, should, like this and that pod, look like they showed up to an orgy and were just like, oh fuck, we had a big dinner. <laughs> you guys wanna just throw on grays and, <laughs> I know it's a rerun, but they're so rewatchable. Um, I am, uh, I'm a married person, that's very exciting for me. My, it's true, My, thank you. A couple gentle applauses. Um, my wife is very smart, which I love and admire about her. I'm medium smart. Like, yeah, right? Medium. Are you medium smart? Absolutely. What would you say is the most, like, what's the top of your smarts? And this is not for me to make fun of you. This is for me to make fun of me. Yeah. So you, multiplication. But to nine. And ten. Ten. Once you hit 10, it gets briefly easier again. <laughs> multiplying by 10, you're like, I know how to put a zero on the back of that. Nobody's multiplying by 10 over my head. No, but that's it, right? That's real, medium smart. I feel like, are you good Like when you're out to dinner and a bunch of people are like, I don't know how to do the tip. You're like, I got this shit. No? Okay, that's fine too. Okay, yeah, very medium. <laughs> I like sometimes will go to a museum for fun. That's the smartest thing about me. I'm not one of those dumb husbands, right? 
Like those, uh, the guys you see in detergent commercials. Just running into the house like, the kids are covered in soil and I ain't going to jail. <laughs> That's not me. I'm medium smart. My wife is very smart. And the gap is widening by the day. I um, Every night at bedtime, we read. My wife and I, we read in bed side by side for half an hour because I still got it. And... <laughs> Yep. And every night but at bedtime, my wife reads a book, not the same book. It's not like a religious thing. She like reads a book, and then she finishes it, and then she starts a new... I don't know I'm explaining what books are to you guys. You all have seen or heard of books. You're at a WNYC event. If you haven't, what brought you here? Um, whatever. My wife reads a book is the point. And the whole time that my wife is, is reading a book, I will scroll ceaselessly, aimlessly through Twitter on my phone which is the not reading of reading. <laughs> so every night at bedtime, my wife gets 30 minutes smarter, more cultured, more empathetic. And I grow 30 minutes furious at things I can't control and don't understand. <laughs> every night before she turns her light off, my wife looks at me and says something like, Josh, I just read the most beautiful passage about what it means to live a life of purpose and wonder. <laughs> then it's lights off, eyes closed, day over for her. But I'm still rocking and rolling. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at my phone like, well, I just read that Elon Musk invented a $15 million laser that turns hats into visors. Fucking scissors do that. What am I missing? <laughs> and then she drifts off into a blissful slumber while I'm just staring at the ceiling, awake and furious. Like, does it also turn jeans into jorts or is that a separate laser? <laughs> I will say this, let's do this. Um, this is a medium smart thing about me. Uh, here, well, I'll do another Never Have I Ever. Never have I ever read a single word that James Joyce wrote. And if you also haven't, take a drink, yeah. If you have, then stay sober. Yeah, right on. I have 20 glasses because I lived in TC and T had, a, had a drink for every uh, hour they did a show. Okay. <laughs> We've all had different experiences. <laughs> sure. Um, I love it. Do, uh, so Wait, so if you have read James Joyce, you drink. Sorry, that's what I meant. If you haven't, like I have. Yeah, you have. What have you read? Uh, the Portrait of an Artist. Portrait of an Artist. That's, you're, you're a regular Pete Buttigieg in here. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a very public radio zing, isn't it? <laughs> um... I, let's do, let's talk about this. I, um, thank you. I, generally when I say a word, I try to know how it sounds. <laughs> uh, I was burned too many times in my youth. Um, okay, I, let me, I'm gonna tell you guys this and then I'm gonna bring up your next comedian. How does that sound? Good. Good. Oh, you guys are such sweethearts. Well, we like you. I, I'll be back. And you're going to like all the other people. I promise. I can vouch for them all. They're all close personal friends and artists whom I admire greatly. Uh, and that said, I'm going to tell you this before I, before I skedaddle. That's how I leave. Um, I am, I'm going to be vulnerable up here for a moment because I'm an artist. Uh, I'm very jealous of the relationships my female friends have with their hairdressers. That's vulnerable of me to admit. I, um, every time a, a, a woman that I'm friends with gets their hair cut, they post a picture on Instagram of that, of her with the, uh, the hairdresser in front of the salon like they just bought it together. <laughs> and there's that day's newspaper to prove it's not a hashtag TBT, right? It's that day, fresh. And then there's always a very lovely, warm caption, very encouraging, very supportive of local business, right? I'll say something like, thanks to Becca, at Curls Before Wine Salon um, <laughs> for the fresh cut and color, hashtag new do, new you. That's so nice, right? And then the hairdresser comments underneath like, gorgeous, like, like you wouldn't say that, like you just did it. Of course you think it's good. <laughs> That's a very different relationship than I have with my hair care provider. <laughs> I, um, I've gone to the same guy for two years and I don't know his name because he won't tell it to me. Um, he doesn't know my name because he doesn't give a shit. He doesn't. And why would he? I walk in mostly forehead. I tell him, make me all the way forehead. <laughs> and that's what he does. 
That's our whole deal. I go to a Russian barber shop. I'm pretty sure it's a front for uranium mine. <laughs> Even if I wanted to post it on, in, on Instagram, I wouldn't know what it's called. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I've been going there two years. I have no idea the name of the barber shop. All I know is I was walking by one day. My hair was getting a little shaggy. And uh, I saw one of those swirling poles. And I opened the door. And a guy in the back went, yes, we do. And I walked in. And they've been cutting my hair for two years. <laughs> Cost me twenty dollars. I'm pretty sure if I gave him another twenty, he would just cut the next guy's head off. Like this is what you ask for, yes. <laughs> this is what money is for. Well, guys, this has been so much fun. I think you're gonna have a really lovely time tonight. Um, before we go, before I go, um, I will say, uh, this is hmm, that's too gendered and unfair. I will say, never, never have I ever invited the guy who cuts my hair to a social event. And if you have done that, you drink. The person who cuts your hair, you have. Oh my gosh, what event? Every birthday party. Every birthday party. Oh, I'm so envious. <laughs> anybody else? Anybody, did, has anybody invited the person that cut their hair to their wedding, not to cut their hair before the wedding? OK, good. <laughs> I was just worried I'd closed myself off to love and friendship. Um, <laughs> You guys are wonderful. Okay, I want you guys, I know it's, it's, a very, it's late at night. I know many of you are borderline asleep. Um, but I want you guys to give all your enthusiasm and attention and energy for your next comedian. And all the, there's, there's five comedians you're going to see, and they're all wonderful. Your first next comedian, she's so funny. She was on Two Dope Queens on HBO. And I'm so glad she's here right now. Please welcome to the stage, Shalewa Sharp. Me one of these and push me in your direction. Hi, everybody. Um, how I would say, how are we? But have we all been up since 5:30 to get ready for a board meeting? That we have to know. Just me. I'm the only lucky one. Uh, great. Um, but look, I reapplied my lipstick for you, so you're welcome. You're welcome. I put it directly on my teeth. So I wouldn't have to worry about it later. So if you see it on there, that's where it's supposed to be. Just let me live, okay? Um, I want to go ahead and get my never have I ever out of the way up top because I, um, I just want you to know what you're dealing with, all right? Never have I ever seen more than three Steven Spielberg movies. Now, guess which three they are. Two of them should be obvious. E.T. E. All right. Great. Great. Nope. Not Schindler's List. No. What was that one? Nah, I haven't seen none of that. No, Indiana Jones. I haven't seen a second. I don't need to. Y'all have been talking about it for decades. There. Huh? Nah. Nope. Who saw that? Did anyone see that? No one saw it. What you got? You have seen it? Good for you. <laughs> That's the page. Jaws. No. No, I did not see Jaws. Jaws no, that would be hilarious. <laughs> Jaws 3 in 3D. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No. The color purple. Thank you for the second one. I, I appreciate all of you open-minded people not seeing color, but I said two were obvious. E.T. for sure. The color purple. Maybe I need to change my... Maybe I should code switch. Um... So what's the third one? What's the third one? The teacher toy soldier. Who? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what he did. I only know three. Nope, I'm sure I didn't see that if it was animated. Not at all. I, I don't like joy. What, anyone? Close Boom, Close Encounters. In the theater, I was a child. So by the time I saw E.T., I was like, didn't I see this already? Um... <laughs> So yeah, I, uh, I once said that to a room of my coworkers and they cleared off whatever project we were working on on the whiteboard to write down the movies to go through them. Like I disrupted the whole day by telling a group of dudes that I had not seen Indiana Jones. They couldn't believe that people like me existed. We exist, we're quiet because you guys get very upset about it. <laughs> but we're very quiet. Um, I, uh, I've been... I'm a little obsessed with clothing right now cuz I'm trying to uh I'm trying to figure out my look. 
you know, for this part of my life. I feel like for different parts of your life, you have like a, a thing that you're doing, a, sil a silhouette, right? You, you're something you're doing and then for like five years and then something drastic happens and suddenly you have to wear socks and now that has changed you <laughs> as a person. Um, so I'm in, the, I'm in the middle age of my life, hopefully. Um, so I can't, you know what I mean? I mean, like, if we do the math, I may be way beyond, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> let's be real. I'm looking Early back at, teens. huh? Who? Early teens. Rolling teens? Early teens for you. For me? Is how old you think I am? Wishing you. Wishing you. Nah, my knees say otherwise. <laughs> and they say it a lot. My knees talk so much. Mostly they're saying, slow down. Slow down, shall I want? But um, I can't wear my young person uniform anymore. I've aged out of that. My young person uniform was just body glitter and hope. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't do that anymore. And also a lunchbox I was using as a purse. We all understand. <laughs> We've all been there. Uh, I can't do that. And I'm about 15 years away from my old lady uniform. I can't wait. I already know what it's going to be. I'm going to be... Um, Y'all know that old lady that wears a cloak? <laughs> you know what I mean? She's about yay tall, normally like a shaved head, statement earrings. She wears a cloak and she has a walking stick with like tiger's eye on the top of it. She's at all the art openings, but she's not an artist. She's just covered in turquoise jewelry. She has a hedgehog for no reason like that. Mm, cannot wait, but legally I gotta wait like 15 years. <laughs> Otherwise, it's like, what's happening? Um, so I'm making a slow transition, but I need to do something for the now, and I haven't, I haven't quite figured it out yet. I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I do know I, I finally uh, bought a pair of jean, just the one, just the one jean. I'm a one, I'm a one dungaree gal. Uh, <laughs> only because buying jeans can be tough for me because I'm, um, I'm exceedingly average which is to say I'm the average height, the average weight, the average size of the average woman in America. So naturally, my clothing is considered plus size and cannot be found in stores, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, not, like Old Navy doesn't even really carry plus size stuff and they carry coats for dogs. But uh, I gotta go on the internet <laughs> and clackety clack. So, so I did it, I did it. I beat all the other fatties to it and I got the elusive pair of jean and I am very excited about it. But please keep that in mind if you see a larger woman and she's wearing an all over print and she doesn't look 100% comfortable in it, just know that she didn't want that shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> it just had the right number of X's before the L. Do you think we all really love leopard like that? We don't, we do not. A scarf maybe, a whole thing? No, nah, I'm not doing that. That's a lot. I gotta break it up with a bandana around my thigh or something. It's just a lot, you know? <laughs> It's so much. Uh, how's y'all's uh, self-care situation going? Y'all look like a self-care crowd. <laughs> well, and I'm just learning that it means, you know, more than showering every day. Um, it's a little bit extra. I'm just buying stuff. I don't know. I don't know what to do with any of it. And I'm out of money now. So now I just have pieces of health all over the place. I don't know what any of it does. Just whatever the targeted ads tell me to do, I'm doing. Which, by the way, ladies, do we know there are so many bra companies out here? Are you getting those ads? There are so many bra companies out here. And also, I don't know what's happened to today's boobies, but they can't take a little piece of iron anymore underneath. All the bras are like, they end in et. You know what I mean? Like bralette or a balconette. And I'm like, mm, nah, these boobies need like a hard R. You know what I mean? I need a bra -er. I need extra bra, please, if you can. Do you have a plate I can just put these on and wheel them in? Like, can we do that? <laughs> I'd like to do that. Oh my gosh. So yeah, I'm just, whatever. I don't, I've got all kinds of little pieces of, pieces of care. I don't know what any of it means. Whatever I overhear on the train, I'm gonna give it a shot. If you were to go 
into my room right now and you did this with your arm, here are all of the self-care products you'd knock over. First, you'd notice my room is tiny, right? You might have also accidentally unlocked my front door, but <laughs> it's a little place. Here are the things you have knocked over. Uh, you've knocked over a personal humidifier, right? You've knocked over an oil diffuser, not the same thing. Those oils are essential, right? <laughs> So important. Uh, you've knocked over a couple of serums. What are those? Why are we, I've got one for morning, one for night, one for hump day. I don't know what they do. I put it on my face, it's stickiness. I assume it's the healing. Um, you've knocked over uh, the charging dock for my vibrator because if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. You all understand that one. We all know that one. We all, they taught us that in church. Um, uh, you've knocked over some Chinese herbs that are supposed to get my chi moving. Uh, you've knocked over the remnants of a shrimp quesadilla, which is probably what blocked my chi to begin with. <laughs> um, you've knocked over like three different lotions of various thicknesses. Um, a, a bottle of water that I'm supposed to drink every morning and every night that I haven't even cracked open yet. Like, if I'm not mistaken, self-care seems to be about being as moist as possible. Like, you just want to be super moisturized. Like, I just want to be damp to the touch, right? But I can't force down all that water. You can't use straws anymore, so now I'm trying to just fall in all out of the corners of my mouth and I can't, I can't do that. It's sexy, but I'm so dry. I'm so dry. Can I tell you my fun fact about, um, about boobies? My little titty fun fact. If you are the kind of person who wears lipstick, your ideal shade is the color of your areola. I'm just gonna dance while uh, I blow your minds. <laughs> Let's not all storm Sephora at once. Yeah, so I've thrown out all of my lip colors, and now I'm just looking for a shade called Ashy. Um, <laughs> you got anything in Chapped? Um, <laughs> that's, that's what I'm doing. Um, let me tell you very quickly about my recent obsession. I've been watching reaction videos on YouTube. Are we familiar with this phenomenon? Okay, if you don't know what a reaction video is, basically an ordinary person will record themselves watching a very talented person perform. Uh, and so if you're watching it on YouTube, the talented part is in a tiny box in the corner of the screen, and the rest of it is just a camera shot up the nose of some dude sitting in front of a wall of laundry. Um, <laughs> eating chips and going, yeah, I like that, right? No idea why this guy thinks we need his opinion, and yet, here I am, just watching it for hours. But I'm not watching um, all of it. I'm only watching one particular kind of reaction video. I'm watching, um, okay, there's this young white woman uh, from Arkansas. She's a singer, her name is Yeba. She's fantastic, she has a beautiful voice. It's very soulful. It's very like gospel influence, like black gospel, because I'm not really sure what white gospel <laughs> is. I'm, ass I'm assuming it's John Mayer. So, <laughs> so it's nice to see that voice coming out of that vessel. So the reaction videos I'm watching are of black people hearing that voice come out of a white person. And I gotta tell you, mwah, it's fantastic. Because we only have one reaction. It's a two-parter. Like, when a, when a black person sees a white person doing something well, first, we're caught off guard. <laughs> um, second, so here's the thing that we do. The first thing we do is we do this, right? We pull back our face, we screw up the features. It's a real Scooby kind of moment, but we don't, we don't make that noise. Instead, we do part two, which is, okay. Across the board, we do that in videos and in real life, and I think, judging by some of the faces of the white people here, you have gotten an okay in real life. If you haven't strived for it, it's an extremely warm feeling. Tell me, white folks, that you haven't had a black woman look at your outfit and go, all right, and you weren't walking on cloud nine for the rest, for the, rest of the week. Are you kidding? Oh, man, but look, we can, 
we can take it away just as quickly as we give it. So no. <laughs> Don't get cocky with it. We still want our reparations checks. Uh, my name's Shalay with Sharp, guys. Thank you very much. Shalay with Sharp, everybody. Oh, my gosh. Before I keep the show moving, I want to see if anybody in the audience has the Never Have I Ever. They want to try to get someone else on. If you have one, throw your hand up, and I want to, I want to see who's got one. If you, have an, if you want to do it. If you, no? Okay. That's fine. You guys are more, you guys are listeners. <laughs> and I respect that. That's what I like in an audience, honestly. If everybody put their hands up, I'd be like, ah, fuck this. <laughs> so it's just, it's, no, that's okay. Um, then I'll just, I'll just introduce you to more wonderful comedy and more wonderful comedians. How does that sound? Yeah, okay. Yeah, perfect. Your next comedian is another one of my very favorites. Uh, and she's been on Adult Swim, and she will be again. Please welcome to the stage, Joe Firestone. Josh. Keep it going for Josh, everybody. Keep it going for him. Josh. He's gonna be here till so late, so late. Well, this is so nice, everybody. Who here has their shoes on still? Okay, some. Okay, that's good. That's actually better than I thought. Uh, this is good. We're all here. Um, you know, I would say never have I ever um, seen a koala, but I just did. They say, don't meet your heroes, but <laughs> wow. I mean, they're really fun. I was in Australia, and they say, that in Australia, on Australia, they hate koalas, which is so weird. They're, like, so disgusted by them, because they're like, oh, they have chlamydia. But it's like, if I didn't like people that had chlamydia, I would have no friends. <laughs> Um, but uh, so I was thinking about, um, you know, this is such a nice, intimate group. Mm. And uh, I was thinking that uh, we, I have a few little slumber party games that I made up. If you, we're going to play them. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so it's really good. This first one is a great game. It's called um, Bed Pillow Blanket. And uh, it's a, um, it, there, there is a right answer, and it's a shame-based game. Uh, so everybody can kind of weigh in. Uh, but just so you know, there is like a right answer. For example, uh, spaghetti, sauce, meatball. What's the bed? What's the pillow? What's the blanket? Spaghetti. That's, exactly, that's right. Okay, what's sauce? Blanket. Yep, exactly. And what's the meatball? Of course, yes. So everybody's on the same page. There is a right answer, and if someone gets it wrong, obviously we will remind them. Uh, so uh, would anyone like to go first? Would anyone like to go? Would anyone like to go first? You would? You would? Okay, you ready? Shrimp, chicken, beef. And oh, if you win, you get, you get a pita chip. Huh? Okay, so I'm going to go, the shrimp is a pillow. Okay. And then let's go beef blanket. Okay. <laughs> no. Chicken is the mattress. Okay, the blanket and pillow. Okay, obviously, did he get it right? No. There, sorry. Okay, so, I mean, there is a right answer. What is the right answer? What's the right answer? Beef bed. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, beef is the bed. Yes, yeah, scream it louder. Yes. Uh, chicken pillow. No, see, people, you've lost people. Okay, what is the correct answer? What, there is a correct answer. What is it? Shrimp is the pillow, yes? Of course it is. Okay, right? So we're all on the same page. Wow, here we go. You get one pita chip that I have touched. There you go. Wow. Okay, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you another, no. Okay, great. So, uh, okay, you're, who was, who's ready? Who's ready? Who thinks they got it? You think you have it? Yeah? Okay. You got a bed at home? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I didn't mean that to seem sexual, but I guess it did. Uh, so, okay. Here we go. You ready? Okay. Men, women, children. <laughs> children are the pillow. Children are the pillow. Okay. Men are the men are the bed, women are the blankets. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Everybody agrees that is correct. You get a pita chip that I touch. Okay. Here we go. There we go. This is for you. This is really good. Wow. I mean, I can't believe there is a right answer to this messed up game. Okay. We're gonna play one more round. Who thinks they can do it? You get two pita chips if you win. Two. And I'll only touch one of them. 
Who thinks they can do it? Who thinks they're up for the challenge? Anybody? You. Yeah? Okay, here we go. Gap, Old Navy, Banana Republic. <laughs> Banana Republic is the blanket. Yes. The, the fast casual <laughs> is the blanket. That's what you'd use to keep warm. Uh, yeah, so I take it back. What's the bed? Uh, Let's start with the basics. Old Navy? Yes, of course it is. Everybody knows that. Gap should be the pillow then. You think so? What? <laughs> you think those sprawling patterns should be a pillow? Come on. They are the blanket. You think Gap's the blanket? Hey, what do you think is that pillow? Uh, banana. Banana Republic? Yes. You think you'd use Banana Republic as a pillow? Yes. <laughs> Correct? Yes. Correct? Yes. Correct? Yes. Well, now, hold on, we have someone disagreeing. What do you think? I say no. Well, who do you... <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what do you think is the bed? Old Navy, right? <laughs> you think that... What do you... Th I didn't raise my hand to play the game. But you disagree. You have an opinion. Yeah. Who else disagreed with him? <laughs> well, what did you think? I, I don't remember what he said. <laughs> <laughs> you think Gap is a blanket? Yeah. Who said that? Oh, uh, <laughs> I think Banana Republic's the best. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, well, listen, I really think you're correct, and I'm going to give you one pita chip because you were contested. I'm so sorry. Here we go. Okay, really good job. Yeah, really good job. And, again, appreciate all of the support. Okay, so uh, let's go. Okay, we're going to play another game. Are you ready? Okay, so I was going to play this one game that I think is a big hit, uh, and it's called um, Liquid Telephone. And basically what happens is ten people line up in a row, and then the first person gets a mouth full of juice, and then they uh, transfer it mouth to mouth, and then the person at the end has to guess the flavor. <laughs> but we'll skip it. We're going to skip it. Uh, we're going to move on. We're going to move on uh, to, uh, to my ultimate favorite game, which I think is really good for adults. Um, welcome. You're just in time. You you've already been okay. So uh, this game is really good. It's um, it's uh, it's called Can the Group Name Twenty Five Birds? Totally. What's that? Totally. You think so? Absolutely. Okay. I got the birds or the same birds? Okay, twenty five different birds. Oh, different birds. Yes, okay. I love you. Okay, here we go. Twenty five different birds. Can we do it? We don't know. Commence. Kiwi. Kiwi. Pigeon. Kiwi. Parakeet. Oh, we're staying with kiwi. Kiwi. <laughs> kiwi. No. Yes. One. Kiwi. Lovebird. Lovebird. Right. <laughs> Love. <laughs> Lovebird. Tidy bird. Tidy bird. Okay. Are these? Okay, toucan. Toucan. Wow. Okay, yeah. toucan. Yeah, we'll be at two with Wait, that. Lovebird isn't a bird. Lovebird is a bird. Oh, okay, nice. Love bird. Three birds. Nice. Nice work. Ostrich. Ostrich. Wow, you guys are really dominating the board here. Yeah. Pelican. Thank you. Pelican. Five. Penguin. What? Penguin. Penguin. Yeah. To, Six. Do they have to be able to fly? What was that? Do they have to be able to fly? No. Oh, no. Robin. No. no. Okay. Flamingo. Flamingo? That's six. Robin. Peacock? Yeah. Hummingbird. Seven. Hummingbird. Cockatoo? Yeah, that's eight. Sparrow. Cardinal? Cardinal. Hummingbird. Cardinal? Yeah. Cardinal, yeah. Nice. Nine. <laughs> Rockapio? Cockatiel. Cockatiel. Yep, definitely cockatiel. That's uh, ten. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pigeon. Pigeon. Thank you so much, pigeon. That's eleven. Sparrow. Sparrow? Nice. Twelve. Raven. Reindeer? Raven. Raven. Yeah, that's thirteen. Nice work. Mm -hmm. Oriole? Yeah, fourteen. Solid work. Eagle, yeah, that's 15. Blue Jay, 16. Do you think we'll make it? Condor. Nice, Condor. Thank you, Condor. 17. A California Condor. California Condor, that's, yeah. that's piggybacking, but I appreciate it. That's 18 with Seagull. California. Seagull? Seagull? Thank you, 19, Seagull. Falcon? Falcon, nice work. That's 20. Ostrich. 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 Ostrich? Was Ostrich already said? I'm so sorry you have to go. 
Yeah. Egret, thank you, that's 21. Magpie? Nice, are you from here? Magpie, it's like, it's like, a, it's like an Edgar Allan Poe reference. Okay, 21. Tits? Tits. Tit? Wow. How many times has tit been yelled out at this space? Uh, okay, 21, nice. Duck? Duck? You got to 22 and now you say duck? Okay, 22, Goose. duck. Goose, thank you so much, Goose. Wow. Dobbin? Muffin. Muffin? Puffin, thank you so much. That's 24 with... Osprey? Osprey? That's 25. Wow. Wow. I mean, we really did it. Did anyone think that we wouldn't? Yes. And then we did. A group of adults all gathered here and named 25 birds. You know, is the joke on anyone? You know, it's like, uh, it's not comedy, but uh, we did have fun. <laughs> okay. Okay, you guys have been so great. Uh, listen, I'm going to leave these here. Everybody that did say a bird, please be honest about it. Watch them. And, Watch the okay, I'll touch them. Thank you. Okay, there we go. So that's for everybody. Okay, take care of yourself. Thank you, Joe. Joe Firestone. Guys, I knew you could name 25 birds. And then you did, and it was beautiful. Has anybody thought of a, a, a Never Have I Ever? Yeah, hit me. Never, never Have I Eaten at Arby's. Never Have I Ever Eaten at Arby's. Oh, that's a great one. If you have eaten at Arby's, drink. I have eaten at Arby's. <laughs> if you have eaten at Arby's, drink is also the new slogan for Arby's. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, I don't know, if you've eaten at Arby's, you're probably... <laughs> it's, it's not going good for you, so... You might want to take to the bottle. <laughs> um, hello, okay. Uh, I'm going to bring up your... I'm going to move these pita chips that Joe has touched. <laughs> I'll move them onto this table. And if anybody wants them, weird. Um, <laughs> your next comedian is uh, so funny. He performs all over the country and internationally as well. Uh, you've, he's been featured in an, on Amazon Prime. He's great. He's here right now. Please welcome to the stage my very good friend, Robert Dean. Josh, thank you, everyone. Uh, Joe kind of fucked me. Um, I was just going to come out here and name birds, and you guys hit all of them, so uh, I guess I'll stick with the premise. Never have I ever owned a pair of binoculars. Uh, it's a lot of bird-related material. I hope you guys are okay with this. Uh, any, any bird watchers in the audience? Do you know that there are uh, red-tailed hawks in Tompkins Square Park? You did know that. Do you know their names? Are the pita chips? Oh, good. The pita chips are still there. There's Upper East Side ones that you know. <laughs> Personally, sir, I'm friends with the Upper East Side ones. No, there's, uh, there's these two uh, red-tailed hawks in Tompkins Square Park, and I know that because one day I was uh, in the park, and there was a group of, uh, let's say mostly men, in khaki, uh, all pointing their uh, cameras at the trees. And so I thought it was like paparazzi and there were like Kardashians in the trees. <laughs> so I was like, what are they pointing their phones at? And uh, it turns out it was one of these red-tailed hawks that live in Tompkins Square Park. And uh, I made friends with a bird watcher, a bird man, uh, <laughs> a, a bird fan. And uh, he explained to me that there are two hawks in the park uh, he let me use his binoculars, but he didn't uh, take them off of his neck. <laughs> Has anyone gotten this close with a bird fan? Has anyone? He kept them on his neck, and I looked through them, and we got really close. And he told me there are two birds in the park, and we were seeing one, and the other one was uh, at the nest guarding the eggs from the squirrels. To which I said, fuck squirrels! <laughs> and he got very upset at that. And in one motion, yanked the binoculars out of my hands 
and walked away. And I lost my only friend I've ever had, <laughs> this bird fan, which, uh, which shocked me because I thought it was birds or squirrels, right? Like, I didn't think you could like both. I thought it was one or the other. I thought we were choosing sides in this. And let's be honest, squirrels are just rich rats. There's no reason to like squirrels. All right. Have you guys ever watched, have you guys ever watched Pigeons Fuck? And how many people have lived in New York for about 10 years to that is your hobby? I've lived in New York now over 10 years and my favorite thing in the world to do is watch pigeons fuck. It doesn't happen often. Usually you watch the mating process. Do you know the mating process of pigeons? It's amazing, the male pigeon puffs out his chest and kind of chases the female pigeon around. And nine times out of 10, the female pigeon flies away and you get to watch the male pigeon deflate. It's, oh, it's so beautiful. Never have I ever, ooh, water. Um, never have I ever been in a long-term relationship. Now you might be asking, what is long term? And uh, hey, hey, that's a good question. <laughs> I was just in a two month relationship, which I know does not mean long term. Uh, she broke up with me on Sunday via text message. Yeah, in her defense, I did have the flu, so I couldn't meet her in person. Please, all the sympathy you have for me. <laughs> Please, as much as you can. She broke up with me via text and she sent me like a persuasive essay of a text message, and I had a fever and I didn't respond. So I'd like to respond to it to you guys <laughs> with a novel I wrote when I received it called In My Defense. <laughs> and to the subject of you were on edibles a lot. <laughs> In my defense, we were at an indoor water park. I'm gonna be on edibles for that. That's why I have edibles, right? Like she claimed in this long, long essay breaking up with me, she claimed she felt bad that I did edibles because she felt like it made her feel boring. And I didn't respond to her, but I wanted to say, it's not that because you're boring, it just enhanced the experience, right? Like I don't think the new Avengers movie is gonna be boring, but I ain't seeing that shit sober, right? Like, I'm not an idiot. I do drugs occasionally a lot. Um, <laughs> like right now I have a day job. Uh, I'm a furniture salesman and I've been trying to get fired. So what I've been doing is I've been getting high every day before work. And I thought that would help me get fired, but it turns out that just makes me a better furniture salesman. <laughs> if you guys are being high is the best way to sell a couch. It makes it so much easier. Like every day I'm just sitting in the showroom Stoned out of my mind. People come in, I'm just like, you gotta try this. <laughs> and they do. And I've gotten promotion after promotion. I can't get fired. I just keep being a better furniture salesman. My boss heard this joke and the response was, if you can do it, good for you. And I'm like, are you challenging me right now? I'll do acid and come to work, I don't give a fuck. I'll turn this showroom into Pee Wee's Playhouse. I'll really go for the gusto. <laughs> the Upper East Side Bird fan is a uh, big fan of Pee Wee. Absolutely. Right on. Yeah. Do you know Paul Rubens personally or just the birds? I watched his show on acid with friends. <laughs> you could have just said, I watched his show with friends. <laughs> Oh, so you're on acid. Hold on! Let us get the picture! You and your friends, I assume last weekend. Several years ago. Several years ago, were like, guys, you know how we've been bored recently? I got an idea. Let's drop acid and watch Pee Wee's Playhouse and then let's smoke at the word of the day. Yes. Cool, man. Not so good. Yeah, when you say it out loud, it's not as cool as... Saturdays just fuck. I would say so, yeah. 
I mean, I would also say your 40s pretty fucked, but yeah, your Saturdays also. I did acid once. A couple months ago, I did acid for the first time, and boy, are my arms still snakes. It's the acid joke I wrote while on acid. Pretty good, right? Pretty fun. Uh... When I was, I was saying, it's crazy that I couldn't get fired from my job because this is true. My dad got fired from his job for making a joke, and this is the joke that got my dad fired. I should say, my dad professionally dressed up like a shark at an aquarium. That was my dad's job. The guy on acid watching Pee Wee is laughing hysterically at that. And the rest of you can too. It's a funny job for a person to have. He entertained children. It wasn't like a low budget aquarium where they had people in costumes in the tanks. <laughs> He was Sharky the shark, and he walked around, and he entertained children. And this is the joke that got my dad fired. Someone asked him, Frank, can I get you anything? And my dad lifted up his shark head and went, yeah, a gun to put me out of my misery. <laughs> I agree with the guy on acid. That is a funny joke. They called the cops on him. They fired him on the spot. Which upsets me because I thought we all made suicide jokes at work. I thought that was part of every office place. Also, he didn't have a gun. He was asking for one. And he had fins for hands. He couldn't have pulled the trigger if he wanted to. And to me, if the 65-year-old man who dressed up like a shark for a living isn't comically suicidal, I'd be way more concerned, right? Like, wouldn't that be worse? If they're like, Frank, can I get you anything? And he was just like, nope. I have everything I need. <laughs> Bring me the children. <laughs> like we got a fire sharky. I know Joe asked a lot of questions of you, but I have one more. Um, does anyone here know what the E in Chuck E. Cheese stands for? <laughs> no? Pee Wee Acid Guy, no? I know, kids not that age, sorry. Kids, not that age. Sorry. I've never been to Chuck E. Cheese. Never have I ever been to Chuck E. Cheese? I, yeah, that's probably for the best, sorry. sir. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that. You're a regular at Dave & Buster's, though, right? No. No? no. Man, you got to get your friends together, do acid, and go to Dave & Buster's. All right. It's an idea for the future. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, a fun piece of knowledge that you might not know. Uh, clearly, never have I ever known what the E in Chuck E. Cheese stands for is for everyone. I know what it is. The E in Chuck E. Cheese stands for entertainment. I looked that up. <laughs> you were guessing every E word, and you're like, it might be entertainment. <laughs> Chuck Entertainment Cheese, which means his full name is Charles Entertainment Cheese. <laughs> which is my favorite name of all time. I don't know why they haven't rebranded that restaurant. We would all go. Are you going to Charles Entertainment Cheeses? Yes, I am. So I had to know, it was late at night, I had to know why was he named Charles Entertainment Cheese, right? Most cartoon animals that I know, their last name is the animal that they are, not the thing they like the most. Also, what parent names a child with a middle and name of entertainment? So I looked it up. And what I found was a children's book published by Chuck E. Cheese. So this is the official canon, right? This is the official backstory of Chuck E. Cheese. And the book begins by saying, no one knows why he was named Charles Entertainment Cheese. And I was like, well, that's all I was looking for, but okay. I'm going to keep reading. And I went on to read it, and it goes on to say, no one knows why he was named that because he is an orphan. Yeah, that's how the book starts. <laughs> So it starts, it goes on to say, uh, because he was an orphan, he also does not know when his birthday is. So he has never had a birthday party, which is why he loves celebrating the birthdays of other children. Remember how happy we were at Charles Entertainment Cheese and how bummed out we are now? Fuck you, Chuck E. Cheese, right? Like there's no need for this much tragedy. He does not need this much depth. He doesn't need a tragic backstory. He's a cartoon rat that owns an arcade, right? He doesn't need sadness in his life. 
if they're gonna go this orphan route, he should be playing acoustic guitar while everyone eats soup. That should be the restaurant. And every night he's like, I don't know when my birthday is, I'm an orphan. Two, three, four, right? But it blows my mind because I've never heard a tragic backstory for any other commercial character, right? Like I've never heard that Captain Crunch was a POW. I've never heard that. And while he was a prisoner, he was fed sandpaper, and that's why his cereal is the way that it is. <laughs> like, it makes sense, but there's no need. All right, I'm Robert Entertainment Dean. Good night, everybody! Thank you much. Robert Dean. Did you know that uh, Ronald McDonald's father was Roberto Benigni's character in Life is Beautiful? That's right. <laughs> Three people remember that movie was about the Holocaust. <laughs> um, okay, any other Never Have I Ever's from the audience before I bring up your next comedian? We have two more comedians left, they're both wonderful. How you guys doing, audience, by the way? Yeah, I feel that way too. I also feel woo about this evening. Um, your next comedian, he's so funny. He, uh, he was on Two Dope Queens on HBO this season as well. He's been on Conan. Uh, he's, he's just terrific. I'm so excited about this. What a show you guys are getting for free on Beanbags. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Nori Davis. Thank you. All right. Hey, what's up, Slumber Party? What's good? All right, we out here in the Beanbag Trap House. This is nice. I appreciate you guys coming out and lounging on the floor. This is nice. In New York, it's raining outside. It's nasty. It's nice, it's sexy. Sexy, it's good, I want a bean bag. Have I never, never have I ever, never have I ever hated, hated my brother for being transgender. Never. <laughs> never. Real talk, I love him. Love him very much. Never, never that. I love him who he is, love that he loves his body, loves who he is and what he's doing. I love, it. love him for it. Only thing is he's like, he's, he likes to brag to me now. He likes to brag to me now. He'll come up to me and look, man, I got more facial hair than you. I got more armpit hair than you. I didn't know he transitioned into an asshole. <laughs> like, I'm happy for you, but you ain't got to flex on me. You know what it felt like? It felt like, like the end of The Little Mermaid. Like the mermaids are like, what's up, Ariel? And she's like, oh, y'all bitches still got flippers? <laughs> y'all still in the water? We just wanted to say hi. <laughs> I got sneakers! <laughs> All right, look, girl, we just want to tell you, go visit your father whenever you can, bitch, bye. <laughs> Ariel's a dick. I'm going back up there, she gonna act like that. <laughs> love him, man, he's good. I always have love for the LGBTI community, man. I hope they get the representation and mainstream that they deserve. To the point I'm hearing they're gonna make a Black Panther 2. And I hope in this movie, the Black Panther acknowledges his brother, the Pink Panther. <laughs> I think it's time. If I can do it, he can do it. I know during the first movie, he was back there like, so y'all not gonna let me fight? <laughs> I, okay, all right. I made y'all outfits. <laughs> okay, all right, Wakanda, okay. I got it. <laughs> yeah, slumber party jokes. <laughs> it's like I act them out more, but why? I feel like you guys are right about to sleep. I just want to give you a little nice joke before you fall asleep. <laughs> this is as loud as I'll get the act out. <laughs> Love New York, man. I'm trying not to drive that much, you know, and get rid of my car, because what they doing, they're putting tolls up everywhere, getting rid of the toll booths, and they're going to do tolls by mail. So when you go through a toll, they're going to bill you in the mail. So basically, <laughs> they don't want their money. <laughs> the hell is mail? Y'all still look in that box? I don't. That's why I feel bad for people that have jury duty. I'm like, why'd you open your mail? 
What are you doing? You 95 years old? Male bias. They better hit me on Instagram. Like, what do you want? <laughs> you know, on Instagram, Easy Pass is following you. <laughs> Go in the DMs, like, you owe us $5. <laughs> yeah, all right, block, get out of here. I'm not paying you. Male. No male. I like packages. Love packages. That's all I care about, cause, cause I summoned it. You got a whole tracking number. I know your story. You my baby. You about to come here. You get a package at your doorstep. You pick it up like a child. Like, oh, you had such a journey. You went to Kentucky, Connecticut, then the Bronx, and you came here. You made it so far. Had such a journey. Then you get an envelope in the mail with your name and address on you like, who snitched? <laughs> who snitched? I changed my address three times and GQ keeps following me. How they keep finding me? I don't want these subscriptions no more. We got an offer for you. Get out of my box. Stay snitching. <sighs> Like mail, I don't like that box. Ain't nothing in there. Ain't nothing in there but threats. That's <laughs> all that's in there: student loan bills, collection. If you don't pay this bill, you won't be able to register your car. Well, then take my car. I'm trying to buy a boat. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't care how many colors you make the envelope. I'm not paying it. <laughs> Get rid of these envelopes, man. Save the environment. Lord, yeah, I'm a cop a boat. All of us, man, get a boat. Just go right down the river, ding, 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 ding. Park on the shore, and then call an Uber and go where you need to go. <laughs> I don't need no car, take it. Uber, Uber's cool, man. I like Uber, Lyft, Juno, whatever your preference is. I mean, we never, we never get up to the OG Uber drivers, the original Uber drivers, our parents. <laughs> they the OG Uber drivers. They were just aggressive. Can you pick me up from school? Well, how long you gonna be? <laughs> oh, I'm ready now. Well, when I pull up, you better be outside. <laughs> I'm not waiting for you. <laughs> okay, now. You know, Josh, mom's gonna give me a ride. Never mind. <laughs> you have one star. <laughs> I don't know why I keep calling you. <laughs> These slumber jokes are brought to you by Just Water. <laughs> That's kind of cool, man. How Water has a celebrity now. Jaden Smith, the best celebrity. All the other waters got to step it up. I think I think only other water was like vitamin water, 50 cents, right? That was it. Then after that, Poland, Dasani, all of that to us is just toilet water. Then we look at just what you're like, yeah, that's Will Smith baby water. I gotta support that. <laughs> I gotta support Will Smith baby water. I'm thirsty. And he trying to solve like, oh, of course, that's the fire water right there. Spring water. You never know what type of water is good for you, right? You ever just have to refer, like, which? I guess, yeah, I'm at spring water now. It's weird. It's kind of weird to think about how, like, there might be, like, a whole water drug cartel <laughs> guarding the spring. It's just like, <laughs> this our river, fam. Don't, shh, don't come over here. <laughs> like, what white man finding springs out here? Where do you find them? Albany? I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna find a spring. And just go bloop, bloop, bloop. <laughs> oh, that's weird. That's a nice slumber party joke, don't worry. <laughs> 
love being a black man. Black men only love three things, man. Only love, we love our mama, chicken, and Dragon Ball Z. That's really <laughs> it. That's it, don't mess with our Goku, ain't gonna be no problem. <laughs> love Dragon Ball Z. What I love about Dragon Ball Z is the women in it. Like, the women are so strong. Like, Goku's wife, Chi Chi, oh, she's so strong. Can you imagine being married to a guy that dies and then comes back, dies? and then comes back, <laughs> dies, and he's wished back. After a while, as a wife, when do you step in like, all right, what are you doing? <laughs> well, I'm about to go save the world. Well, obviously, you can't fight. <laughs> you keep dying. Why don't you stay home? A green man is raising your child. Don't you care, Goku? Piccolo is this green alien that's been raising his son while he was dead. Shame. And, and then he died and go on and had to fight a whole grown man enemy by himself at 11 years old. No child should turn Super Saiyan before 18 years old. That's too young. <laughs> that's horrible. All right. All right, let's close down this slumber party. <laughs> One more joke. Never have I ever, never have I ever. Yeah, yeah, I think I covered all that. I like how I love being engaged, love my fiance, it's dope. I, um, we have a cat and, uh, well, it's her cat and her cat likes me, so I'm honored. <laughs> So, I, cause cats, that's the only animal that you don't, you don't pick them, they pick you. <laughs> Every time I try to pet her, she would move out the way, <laughs> we'll circle back. <laughs> Stop being thirsty. <laughs> only cats make you feel like Anne Hathaway and their Meryl Streep from The Devil Wears Prada. <laughs> hey, Lippy, how are you? <laughs> Why is the cat food not ready? <laughs> It's never ready. Why isn't it ready? <laughs> Dr. Animals are dope. What I love about Dr. Animals is like you can see the appreciation on their face. They always have that face like, thank you so much. You don't know what I've been through. <laughs> like, I want to know their story. They tell you the doubt, but they don't tell you their story, like exactly what they've been through. Like, I really wish we can pour a little whiskey in their water. <laughs> they drink the water, then grab a cigarette, sit on the couch, and I'll tell you my story. <laughs> you call me Libby, that's not my name. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Trey. I'm a male cat, <laughs> but I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> All right. You guys sound you're awake. Uh, thank you guys for having me. I'm Nori Davis, man. Have a good night. Welcome back, Josh. Thank you so much, man. All right. Nori Davis, everybody. Oh my goodness, have we had a good time? Yeah. Absolutely. Guys, we have one more comedian left. How are you feeling about that? Yeah. Oh my gosh, she's so great. She is uh, a, an excellent friend, but that doesn't matter to you guys. <laughs> Uh, she's just terrific, and she's a writer for The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel on Amazon. Yeah, heard of it? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know why I got so confrontational. You ever watch a fucking show? I don't know, I'm sorry. Uh, she's so funny, and she, uh, enjoy her, please. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Allison Livey. <laughs> One more time for Josh, everyone. Let him hear it. He hosted this. Clap if you're awake. That's good. It's crazy. We could all be asleep. I don't know why we're awake. I always want to be asleep. Um, this is fun. You're all cozy on these bean bags. You're leaving. That's perfect. Um, I know I look like I own a cat. Um, I don't. Um, I don't own a cat. I did recently cat sit, not to brag. Oh, you're coming over here. This is lovely. Um, 
I did recently cat sit. I was cat sitting for a cat named Courtney, um, and she peed in the toilet. So we were on a journey together. Um, <laughs> it was quite a four days. Really learned a lot about myself. Uh, my friend dropped her off, and she was like, don't forget to leave the seat up for Courtney. I was like, what's happening? <laughs> I don't know. Cats are cool. I mean, it's like fun to have like a Roomba that like shits instead of takes things up. Um, they just kind of move around the house. I, I like cats. I also like dogs. Are you guys a, are, are we a dog audience, a cat audience? Yeah. Cat? Yeah. We're a cat. Yeah, you're all like, we're at WNYC. Like this is a cat audience. I get it. I'm into it. Um, I, I don't understand why people always set them up as a binary, like that you can only like cats or dogs. Like, to me, like, they're not Triscuits and Wheat Thins. Like, you can like both of them, you know? <laughs> like, I'm from a Triscuit house. What are you? Triscuit. Trisk thank you. Good answer. Um, don't say Wheat Thins. <laughs> like, come on. It's the lesser cracker. Uh, they're too sweet. They feel like they have sugar on them. Uh, anyway, that's a whole other, that's a different show. <laughs> um, I, li I like dogs, too. I just have this one issue with dogs, and that's, like, too many dogs have jobs. Like most of my friends don't have jobs, but there's like a ton of dogs out there. I mean, some of my friends work for dogs, uh, but like there's just so many, like dogs have, like a seeing eye dog, I've never helped a blind person. You know, <laughs> like I'm not going to unless there's money on the table. Uh, dogs don't even get paid. It's kind of crazy that dogs are in charge of blind people. That's not the way to say it, but that, that we've, that, that's, I mean, and it works out great. I'm glad it exists, but like, I just feel whoever proposed the idea must have sounded insane, right? Because it's like, oh, who should be the steward of this person who needs extra help because they don't have an ability to keep them safe from danger that the rest of humanity luckily has? Like, who is responsible enough? And we were like, well, like, this thing does eat its own throw up, so <laughs> should that be in charge? <laughs> Just... No. It's we... The thing about dogs with jobs that is frustrating to me is that dogs don't know the stakes of the jobs that they have, right? Like, a drug sniffing dog is just like, I found the smell. And it's like, that man's going to jail, you narc. Like, <laughs> come on, buddy. Be your friend. Man's best friend, my ass. Dogs tell the cops when we have drugs and we're all still like, who's a good boy? Like, that's how much we love dogs. All right, maybe you guys don't. <laughs> I don't know, I know a lot of good ones. Uh, I, all right, so never have I ever, never have I ever um, let a customer service issue that I've had with a company go without doing something drastic. Uh, I'm going through something right now that I, I'll tell you a story that's gonna reveal my insanity, but also hopefully prevent you uh, from going to the store. Uh, I, so I'm 35 and I'm like a single lady and I have a lot of plants as we do, right? My house is a Pinterest hellscape. Uh, it is just nonstop plants. I bought a $300 cactus, I'll say it. Um, I'm not proud, but it happened. Um, I bought this $300 cactus. I went to the store and I was just like, I was like, I want to do it. Like I got this like this two pronged. I don't know. It's there's two cactuses in a very expensive pot that I lugged up to my third story apartment, and I had to like wrap it in bubble wrap as I was like carrying it up the stairs. I was like, this is worth it. Like I definitely feel fulfilled now that my apartment looks better. Uh, so I bought this cactus, and like one of the two that was in the pot within two weeks died instantly. And I went back to the store uh, where I bought it with a picture to show them and be like. What the fuck? I spent $300 on this. Like, I feel like I should have more than two weeks with this uh, pretty but mean plant, uh, which I loved it. Um, and so I went in, and I and the store is called Garden in Brooklyn, but uh, they spell it G-R-D-N, so Garden. And, uh, you know, for all of your urban gardening needs. And <laughs> I hate Garden. They could go fork themselves because... I went in with a picture of my plant and I was like, look what happened. And they were like, well, what did you do to it? And I'm like, what? I fucked it. What do you think I did to it? I did nothing. I went away for a weekend. I didn't water it. Nothing happened. It's a cactus. It's not supposed to die. It's literally a villain. Like it's made of weapons. Like, and that I like somehow killed this plant and like that's on me now. And they were like, well, just like take it out of the pot and just like let us know what happens. And I was like, oh, I will. Um, and I got drunk as most of my customer service 
uh, experiences tend to end as. And I left it on their doorstep. And that <laughs> just ripped it out of the pot and just kind of threw it against the door and was like, goodbye, Gurdon. Uh, I don't know. It just makes me sound crazy. I guess it's not super relatable. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I did just get a haircut recently. Thank you. And uh, I can't believe that none of you have said anything. And <laughs> I got a haircut. And I have to say, like, getting your haircut is, like, fully, as a woman, uh, the worst you look for an entire hour of your life, you're like, oh, this is it. This is the worst I've ever looked. And I'm just gonna stare at that for like 45 minutes, right? Like, it's just like they put you in a position when you're getting your hair cut, like they're just like, they're like, okay, we'll sit in this chair. And you're like, mm, cool, now my body is square, ideal body type. Um, and then they just like put that little like tent on you to your second chin and you just look like a mini fridge with a tablecloth on it. And then they wet your hair and they part it down the center and it's just like a rounder, round face. And you're like, was I in the ring? What happened? Why do I look terrifying? And then you just have to stare at that in the mirror for an hour while like a very pretty woman with tattoos like tells you what podcast she listens to. And you're like, this is my own private hell. Uh, it's t I think part of it is just like the the plan of like hairstylists where they're just like, yeah, they like turn you around after you, they dry your hair and you look like a human again. They're like, what do you think? And you're like, well, I don't look like I was a body dragged out of the river last month anymore. I guess bangs are fine. Uh, I don't know. I got a hair, I cut nine inches off of my hair. Thank you. I know. All the women are like, are you okay? <laughs> um, no. And uh, no, I cut nine inches off my hair. I went from like fundamentalist to like human being. <laughs> it's been very exciting. Um, no, I didn't, no, but like my friends were like, is this a breakup haircut? And I'm like, no, I've been alone the whole time. <laughs> trying to get to a breakup. That's the goal. I mean, I do have a sex partner right now, his words. And no, he's great. He's, uh, he's better looking than me. Uh, he's way better at sex than I am. Um, I'm more successful, but it's like, who's keeping score? <laughs> Someone has to pay for dinner if we ever go. Um, Okay, don't feel bad. I'm like making a lot of money. Um, I don't know, I'm, try I'm working through a Nature Valley granola bar ad that's kind of ruining my life. I don't know if anybody else is being terrorized by this company. Um, you guys know Nature Valley granola bars, right? Yeah. They're like, they're two flat like surfboards of oats that come in that green package. You bite into them and they just turn into nine pounds of sawdust. And you're like, did I have breakfast or build a bench? What was this? <laughs> I feel like they're just working with Roomba in some kind of like vertical integration issue where they're just like, yeah, that comes as a set now. Uh, Cause they're like, if you empty out any office keyboard in America, like upside down, you get like one and a half Nature Valley granola bars. <laughs> they're so gross. I feel like there's just some guy in the back of PetSmart where they're like, you're in charge of filling the gerbil cages with that crap that's at the bottom. And he's just like, nom, 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 nom. like yeah. all, it's all just there. So this ad, there's a woman who's like out for a hike. Uh, she's by herself in the woods. So maybe she's about to get murdered. We don't know. And uh, she's walking around and she's like, take it. She's walking. I don't hike. I'm like, yeah, she's like walking around the woods. And uh, she's looking out at this vista of like mountains and trees. And she's just taking it all in. And then she opens up this package of Nature Valley granola bars. And then she bites into both of them at once. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, is your dentist a billionaire? Like, what is happening inside of your mouth? Are your teeth granite? Like, that has to be construction equipment. Like, the only way to eat those granola bars without just wrecking your teeth is to dip them in water like you're at the hot dog eating contest. Ugh, they're so dry and gross. I just can't figure her out. She's just ruining my life. I can't stop thinking about this woman because I'm like, We've all seen those granola bars. We know that's not how you're supposed to eat them. It's so obvious. It's not like, it's not like Reese's. Like there is a wrong way, you know? And it's that way. I'm just like, what else doesn't she know how to eat? Right? Like I feel like this woman sees a bowl of soup and she's just like, ooh, a hat. <laughs> she opens up a Twix and she's like, chocolate tampons. <laughs> like, Both at once? Like, no! Everything is one at a time. It's hard. I feel like commercials really do treat us like we're all morons, right? I mean, that really is kind of like the MO of like all of television. Like there was this ad, uh, this infomercial I used to see late at night because I uh, 
don't sleep. And, uh, well, I guess near to you guys. Well, some of you are, <laughs> but that's fine. Um, no, there was this ad that used to come on at night. It was for tortilla bowls, and it was like this mold that you could get so you could bake. Like, tor You guys have had a taco salad. You're a very urbane group. I know what you're all about. But like the ad was like, oh, they're baked. They're so healthy. They're baked. Everybody should eat out of a baked tortilla bowl. This is the healthy way to eat, which I don't think is true. Um, just because like, I don't think that the healthy way to eat is to uh, eat the bowl that your food comes in. I don't... <laughs> It's not, I don't think the healthy way to eat is just to like keep going until you hit table. Like it's not <laughs> quite right. It's like next up, just like a sheet cake and it's a plate. Just eat your way to death. Make your house out of pretzel bread and that's the only way you can get out. We're Americans, we weigh 600 pounds. Like that's, it's crazy. I, um, one more thing and then uh, we'll get to the next thing. That's how things work. Um, <laughs> That's order, the concept of order. I, uh, I, well, there was, I'll just wrap up with this. Uh, there's, there's this one other ad that I see all the time, and uh, it's, it just, it's also ruined. Commercials really govern my mental state, if you can't tell. Um, I watch a lot of television. But there's this, this ad for this service where they teach you the process of buying a car, and they help you with the financing and how to understand like what the sales terms mean and how to get a good deal. And in this ad for the service, this woman comes on and is like, oh, this is great. I don't even need to bring a man with me now. <laughs> right? It's crazy. Because it's just like, lady, <laughs> then how are you going to pay for the car? <laughs> like, <laughs> think it through. It's a terrible joke to end on, but that's what's going to happen. Um, <laughs> somebody's up. Um, I, I, have the, I have the luxury uh, and, the, and the privilege of getting to introduce the movie that comes after the comedy part of this. And uh, I, I picked my favorite slumber party movie uh, that I watch constantly. And now my slumber parties are bummers because it's just like, men I'm not interested in. Um, and, but they used to be, me and my girlfriends, like watching great uh, movies like the one we're going to watch. And I, I, a quick, tiny little story about this movie is I once, uh, very high, uh, on Amazon ordered 27 copies of it on DVD and didn't remember that I did that. And then a box of almost 30 copies of Clueless came in the mail to me. Uh, still don't know why. Uh, they made it very hard to return them. <laughs> and uh, well, so if you want a copy, uh, just find me. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, clap it up for my favorite movie, hopefully yours, Clueless. <laughs> 